Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, I just want to do a quick update on all the things that I changed in the build before I fill it back up. Uh, if you look up here, I added an LCD temperature sensor uh, by XSPC. I had to change out this fitting because it was starting to corrode on the outside and I'm pretty sure it was leaking. Inside the build, I took this fitting. It was up here. Moved it down here. Uh, this fitting was in the bottom over here. Moved it up over to the top. Decided to add a second uh, water cooling bridge. Um, finally decided to listen to Jay's two cents and give it a shot. What could it hurt, really? I, I've got enough water pressure and uh, large enough tubes that I should be able to handle it no problem. This is where the temperature sensor goes in, so that way when the water flows out from both cards, it hits this, and I should get a fairly decent average of what the actual build is at. Um, after the tubes come back down, I actually shortened this tube up so I can have my disconnect right here. That way I can use it as a way to drain both sides of the tube outside of the case instead of using these ports like I was before. Um, and then this is a completely new tube that goes up into the reservoir and then the reservoir fitting has also been changed because that one was corroded and leaking. Good thing there's a nice little tray in here. Um, probably the best thing Corsair's done in forever in my opinion. And um, it saved pretty much my computer. Uh, at, least, at least the hard drives. Anyway, I also added in this um, nice braided wire. Um, cover-up kit. It's just a little conversion kit here by NZXT. This is actually the kit that I got from Timmy Tech, so thank you for that, Timmy. I went ahead and I stuffed the computer full of paper towels in case there are small leaks, and then I have a couple of clean plastic containers on standby in case I need to do like a quick um, emergency drain in case there's a larger leak and try to control how much fluid doesn't get under the computer. I will be using EK's e-coolant UV Lime Green. Um, this is the Ecto-1, so I want it to look as much like Slimer and, and uh, anything Ghostbusters going through the, through the tubes as possible, so I've got the Ecto. I use a sports bottle to actually fill the reservoir. I think it works a lot better than a funnel. And then I also have a funnel to fill the sports bottle. Kind of ironic. And then just a a plate to catch everything since I'm on a carpeted floor and I didn't do it in the kitchen trying to get the feel for the new room. I also went ahead and I connected the uh, on off button. This basically just uh, switches the power supply on. The only thing I have connected are a couple of fans, some LEDs, and then of course the pump so that way I can bleed the system. Now if you pay attention right here the one, two, three, fourth, and fifth slots on the top of your uh, 24 pin is what you're going to connect together if you don't have one of these handy dandy gadgets. And then in that case, they'd be constantly bridged. And so instead of hitting the button like this, you're going to be in the back switching the power on and off to cycle the motor. Just to double check, just to make sure you guys get it, here's the clip for the top of the power supply that connects to your motherboard and it'll be the fourth and fifth on the top where the clip is. Those are the ones you're going to bridge to only turn on your Molex power. Or well actually it's the power of the whole power supply but you're only going to have the Molexes connected in this case. Or whatever you're using to power your pump. Cross my fingers, here we go. Moment of truth. Sweet. Quick disconnect working perfectly. Alright, so that takes a little bit of time just to get it ready, but trust me, the sports bottle is way worth it. Because once I'm actually bleeding the system, I can fill while I bleed. So that way the reservoir always has plenty of fluid because you don't want to let it get below halfway. It's just a bad idea. And as you can see, the quick disconnect is working perfectly. I've already got plenty of fluid all the way across there, which really adds 
to the ability to bleed it much more quickly and accurately, at least as far as I'm concerned. And so far, we have absolutely no leaks, which is awesome. All right, double check inside. Yep. Yep, dry. Dry is where I want it to be. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and switch the power supply on. We have power. Now, the idea is to get the water flowing without catching any air bubbles. At least not letting the air bubbles get into the pump. incredibly tedious but if you have patience it pays off in the end. So far still no leaks. The reservoir is actually spending more time backflowing into this tube than it is actually pushing fluid forward, but I'm okay with that because the less air in the lines, the better the cooling. And here's a nice angle from my point of view. As the build gets more full, I have to uh, start and stop it a lot more often to capture the smaller bubbles. And this is exactly why you don't want to have anything but the pump connected because all this on off on your motherboard and on your hard drives would be pretty much horrendous. Uh, just, it's just all kinds of bad. Now I've pretty much topped off the entire system, so what I want to do now is I want to seal this as best as I can. Yes, nickels are tools. Alright, so I've gone ahead and I went through double checked for leaks, and now I'm going to do something kind of silly. Sealed it up, got everything closed. I'm going to start tilting it different directions now. So that way, if there's any air pockets trapped inside the radiators or anything like that, they have a chance to get out now. Oh, see, there's a big air pocket right there. And as you can see, the thermometer's working real good. Water's at about 25.6 degrees Celsius. Can't complain about that. That's a good temperature. And you're just going to want to rock your system back and forth, 
making sure to get all the good angles. Jiggling also is good. As long as you know you've got everything solidly installed. Helps to have a computer with a handle too. Alright, that's about as good as it's going to get right now. So I'm going to go flip this off. Disconnect this right here. Alright guys, so I went and let this uh, rest for a couple of minutes, let all the bubbles kind of collect and settle together. Here's something I do, which I don't 100% recommend. I took a twist tie, I stripped the ends, and I jammed it in the fourth and fifth slot, just like I talked about earlier. Flip on the power supply, and then let it run. Just, uh, just as a way to get some of the bubbles out and get it going, I try to let it run for about 24 hours, and then... Once you can see through the uh, tubes fairly well and it's uh, pretty clear all the way through the system, then you're 100%. I could easily start playing games now, but it's getting late and I'd rather just let it bleed out anyway. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, as soon as it's done, I'll see you guys on the flip side and I'll start recording from the computer again. So it's been a few weeks now and there's been no issues, no leaks, nothing, and the computer is cooling really well. Even in this hot Florida weather, um, I think it's probably 80 degrees-ish in this room right now because I've been editing this video for the past few hours. So with two screens and, you know, closed room, Florida weather, the temperatures are really good. As you can see right now, it's hovering at about 30.1 which is just about 86 degrees. So even with the room being about 80 degrees, it's somewhere between 75 and 80 because I have my air conditioner set to 75 and I'm just assuming it's hotter in here because the door's been closed and I haven't, you know, it's hot, I can feel it. So that's only about a six degree difference, give or take. I think that's pretty good. Um, to have the computer only six degrees hotter than the surrounding air, that's pretty awesome and 30 degrees celsius is ice cold for a computer i really can't complain it's working really well so all that aside and you know my temperatures which really aren't relevant to a refill video just i wanted to point that out and i thought it was pretty awesome anyway let me know if this video helped you give me a thumbs up um if you don't like it give me a thumbs down but let me know why you didn't like it or Ask me questions. Uh, I'd be more than willing to help you if I've skipped over something or if you just have a question in general about how to fill a computer uh, when you're doing your water loop, just ask. I try to respond back within about 24 hours, uh, sometimes sooner, sometimes less, depends on how busy I am. I do have a new baby. Um, other ways to reach me, you know, like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter. Um, I do post things on Instagram, Imgur, uh, you know, a lot of sites. They're all down in the description below. Just click it, follow it, you know, do what you got to do, see what you like. I hope you guys liked what you saw. And this was Refilling a Computer Loop with a little bit of Chanley Style.